I'm not very helpful anymore, I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, I just did a temp dub for a voice match with Charlize Theron a couple of months ago. What's the um, the movie that Will Smith was in? Where he was Hancock. Just, what is it? Hancock. Hancock. Oh my God. Can I just tell you the most embarrassing? The casting director just sent me in. And Charlotte Theron is very difficult to voice match. I mean, she's got an extremely specific sound. And I thought I could get her. Like, I was listening to her, and I got to the stage, and her first scene, and I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I cannot do her. I, she was, like, playing this really tough, like, you know, the warrior princess girl, and I just... I was like, I'm so sorry. I got two of the other scenes that we did. It was fine, but this one scene, I just butchered it. And um, thank God it didn't matter because she was coming in to do her own stuff <laughs> the next day. But they needed it for screening. So I would have to say that was probably the worst miscast <laughs> of any. But I still got paid. Sometimes you have to audition, and it hurts her voice so much to the audition that you just... It kills you to do it because you know it's going to be a huge hit, but you're like, I'm sorry, I can't take this money that you probably won't give me because I don't need to be able to talk. For yes, this like, well, please don't cast me. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. Video games yeah. a lot. It happens with all the, the combat video games a lot where you get in and I'll go, uh, all right, uh, congratulations, you're in Medal of Honor 4. Now, for the next four hours, you're going to be screaming as if you're on fire, and <laughs> screaming as if you're falling off the building, and then screaming in combat. By the end of like the first 20 minutes, you're like, seriously? How much more of this is there? You sound like the Sandman. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, there's actually, I would say there's two different types of miscast, by the way. There's a miscast where somebody has completely mistaken what you can do. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you're not an African American seven foot tall gentleman. No, I'm not. <laughs> Which you would have known had you ever seen me before. Uh, but then there's also miscast in terms of like, Things that you don't think you do, or things that you haven't done before. I thought I was completely and totally miscast as Kakashi, because I never do that stuff. Crispin does it, Steve Bloom does it, but you know, those base, like, Vaso, Profondo, uh, Grande, Cajones guys <laughs> are usually what they do, and I usually do the comic relief goofball. Like, I'm the sidekick that gets set on fire and shoved out the door. <laughs> But then when I got in there, we were actually there with the Japanese team. They they obviously saw something and heard something in the way I was doing the, the character that they really liked. So I thought I was miscast. They didn't. And since really all that matters is what they think, I'm glad that they didn't replace me. Or the third kind of miscast where you get in there and they play your reference for you and you go, um, that's not me. That's Joe yeah. Strong. So. That's <laughs> commercial session like that once where I walked in and they're like, this is really something that takes about five minutes. Um, you just mispronounce the word, we're going to play what you did before, you just do it again. And I hear, some guy literally with a voice about two octaves lower than mine. I was like, I think this is going to take more than five minutes. <laughs> or you want to call the guy who actually did it last time. <laughs> but then, yeah. I'm how do you feel when you see like people cosplaying as characters? I usually like to go up to people cosplaying as one of my characters and say like their Alucard or something and be like, hi there, nice Alucard. And they usually go, thanks, freak, who are you? <laughs> character that you've been staring at for the last six months, you know, seeing it come to life and seeing everybody's interpretation of it is really cool. It's fun. It's a lot of work. We can, I give you guys props for stuff like that. I was in Tokyo for a convention and a dude was dressed as the big O, you know, the giant <laughs> robot. He was dressed as the giant robot and he had like articulated hands. And he, was, and he was about eight feet tall, so his head was like where the neck of the robot was, and the arms were like longer than his arms. And he had, it was just astounding. And so I had to have him like choke me to death and take a picture because <laughs> it was just so cool. <laughs> I met a tiny little Amidala once, and she was just so cute. And I'll never forget her. And I took a picture with her, little tiny queen of Dala. Oh, uh, 
basically a question for all of you guys. Um, I hear all the time that you know voice actors don't actually like hearing themselves um, after recording. Do you guys actually feel that way? Um, I would, well, it depends. A lot of us that do multiple characters, uh, and, and you know, I'm very lucky and, and uh, great, and you guys are too, that I get to do a lot of times more than one voice in every show, because I just do a lot of voices, and it's because I hate the sound of my own voice. So you start talking in different ways so you don't sound like yourself anymore. But um, I think at the end, once once you you know you record something, especially for original animation and for video games, a lot of times I can't wait to see it. I just did um, 15 episodes of Spaceballs, the animated series, which was one of the most incredible experiences you could possibly imagine. To sit in a room with Mel Brooks and Don DeLuise and Joan Rivers and all those guys, and just you know. You're talking to them and they're talking back to you. It's not like you're talking to the TV and the TV is staring at you. <laughs> um, but, and I couldn't wait to hear what that looked like and sounded like, because you can never really tell in the room, you know, we're all laughing and having a really good time. And believe me, most of the time the outtakes are better than the actual takes. Uh, but when, you, when, you're, when you're done with it and you walk away from it, it feels good. You know the director was happy. You know you enjoyed it. but. Once the picture gets added to the voice, it changes it completely. In some cases, it utterly destroys it. And in some cases, it makes it just a thousand times better than you could ever have imagined. I, I hate the sound of my own voice, but I do love to see the animation, like Dave said, so I like every part except for what I'm talking. I can't even listen to myself and leave a message for somebody on the answering machine. When I hear my husband listening to his messages, I think, oh, but, but I did love to see the finish product. It's so beautiful. You know, there's something about answering machine voices that are annoying because I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, is that me? But um, when, I, when I'm in character, when I'm doing a character and I, I hear it back and it sounds better than what I expected, I'm like, wow, that's me? <laughs> that's crazy. That doesn't even sound like me. Um, but it's gotten better. Like in the beginning, it was really difficult to hear myself back because I was just I would just cringe. But now I'm kind of used to hearing myself. So yeah, I think once you it's like you get used to hearing yourself, and the more you hear yourself, the more comfortable you are. For me, anyway. It was very disconcerting the first time I heard my voice come out of an animated character, especially since it's one of the main characters I was doing was the goddess from the Slayers, and I was taking over for another guy's voice. So it was like, well, that's not the right voice anyway. Um, but then after a while, it just got to this point where I was like, oh, that was good. Oh, but I can do it better. Wait, wait, let me do it again. And then that's usually my problem. Is I'll hear it and go, oh, oh yeah, no, I can hear that. No, let me do it better. And so I constantly sort of critique it and wanting to tweak it. And someone finally has to go, Chris, can go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, can we just, um, it's like the Arctic Circle up here. Is there any way to turn the air down? Or a large pot of tea. That my we nose is like <laughs> <laughs> my nose is a large chunk of ice. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Said, said the people who just flew in from California, where it's 170 degrees. <laughs> <in the show. laughs>